The person on the call sounded just like his 12 year old daughter. When she, her voice cracks, there's a certain sound to it and it had it and my blood just, you know, ran cold because there was no other explanation for it. But it wasn't. It was a scammer using artificial intelligence to clone his daughter's voice. The person even knew his daughter was out of town in Tampa, which made it feel even more real for Jesse. He didn't want to show his face, but told me he did what any parent would do. He wired the scammer $600. You know, that's the risk, and that was the reason why some uh, very big uh, techno giants in this country said, go slow on this whole artificial intelligence thing. The first among them was Steve Wozniak. Of course, the name rings a bell to you. He and Steve Jobs co-founded Apple. I think it did pretty well for both of them. Kind enough right now to have Steve Wozniak here. Very good to see you, Mr. Wozniak. As you know, you probably heard all these AI executives were at the White House today. I don't know what came of that. But they're worried. Uh, apparently, something big is happening, and it's happening really fast. You were worried about it enough to say go slow. Um, what do you think happened at the White House? Um, I have no idea what happened at a White House. I stay away from politics um, <laughs> uh, to every bit I can. Um, hopefully, they presented um, the dangers in a realistic fashion and not in a fashion of, oh, here's all the greatness. Let us go ahead and do everything we can because we'll make money on it. I don't think, you know, the economic view is the one to take. It's what can happen to individuals and people. And the doors are too open for misuse of data, especially with these deep fakes that, you know, fool you, trickery. I yeah. mean, I'm into honest things. I, I hear something and I know, yeah, that's real. And I don't want to be fed a bunch of stuff and be told it's real and get faked out and converted. It's part of the divergence we have in this country now. You know what, what stood out? You were among the earliest to cite this. So you co-wrote, uh, you know, uh, 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 or authored a, a letter, about 1,100 plus signed, I think. Elon Musk among them saying, uh, essentially, uh, slow down here, take a six-month pause. Um, but it's fair to say that unless everybody does the same six-month pause, someone's going to be racing ahead, right? Oh, I never look the world that way. That's just like fear tactics, like, mm. you know, fears and lies that get us into wars and things. Um, I just, I won't get into that camp. No, nah, technology has always been here. You know, a human being can do so much. Give them a hammer, they can do more. That's technology. Give them a wheel, they can do more. Uh, even our early personal computers, give a personal computer, and a person could do more than they could before. And artificial intelligence is just the latest endpoint of that, which is able to gather information, organize it, and, you know, do things better than a human. But on the other hand, show Google 80,000 pictures of dogs, and Google can recognize a dog faster than any human. Is that intelligence? My one-year-old granddaughter sees a dog and knows that it has limbs, and the limbs are soft and hard and flexible, and uh, the dog has an eye and, and decides where it's going to go and looks around and does. They, my, grand, my granddaughter knows what a dog is, and artificial intelligence just misses out on a lot of stuff. And artificial intelligence is only going to be at the perusal of humans. Now, there are bad actors in the human world that try to trick us and, like, fake out that uh, Jesse with his daughter's voice right, you know right. and I we're getting hit with so much spam things trying to take over our accounts and our passwords trying to trick us into them they're getting they get cleverer and cleverer and it's horrible to think that people are falling for it and they are right and left it pays for itself very easily and and AI being you know the latest evolution of um, computers at our disposal is going to increase that you know but I, I, I wonder whether uh, this is as innocent as some of the technology you were coming up with uh, with Steve Jobs, of course, when the Apple I computer came out, the Apple II, of course, which was groundbreaking. That was your baby. Um, but it, it was an innocent start to what was a promising technology. The, the rest is all history. There are more worries about AI, uh, Steve, and I'm wondering whether they're justified, whether we're prematurely fearing this. Uh, we're overly fearing it. A lot of people say, oh, my gosh, a lot of jobs will disappear because AI can construct content very well. Well, AI can construct content, but it also has horrible problems. Some are like hallucinations. Sometimes it takes a side that we know is totally inaccurate. Mm. And uh, so, you know, so AI is just uh, um, you should be aware. You should be informed. 
this is coming from AI. Just tell me that, and I will know which, what to be very skeptical of. You know, if it's coming from a person that I trust, that's worth an awful lot more, you know? Yeah. I'm a human being. I, I hear stories that make my decisions are based on, and some of those stories will make me cry even. Tell me an AI that cries. So it's very different than real intelligence that humans have. We don't even know how the brain's wired. We keep trying to make a brain, and I just say I was with some engineers who figured out how to make a brain. It takes nine months. <laughs> um, but, you know, the one thing I notice with this is how fast it is, Steve. In other words, this technology, whatever its bumps, they quickly get corrected at, like, warp speed. And I, I think that's the worry, and that was part of the worry and the reason for all these guys meeting at the White House today. Uh, and I, I, I don't know whether that's the government's way of saying, this is going to be big, we have to do something about it. Does the government have to do something about it? Well, we're actually very late. I mean, there are a lot of people who have been uh, producing this and studying it for years, and some of the top people now have backed away and said, we need regulation and there's too much, da you know, harmful danger. We should get ready for it. Um, I do not know what the government's role in there is. Like, I, I mean, I became non-political long ago, and I don't, would never vote. You know, it's just I, I don't want to avoid these things that turn into side. One side takes, you know, for example, if Republicans propose something, the Democrats will have to oppose that. And, right. and uh, you know, it's this big division thing. Nuts, I'm not, not into that. We should really be objective. We should be objective. Where are the danger points? And we see them, and we're not taking any action yet, really. Um, look at, And look at what the social web brought us as far as the negatives being tracked everywhere and all that. And what if we had just sat down and thought about it before the social web came and had some regulation of the right type? What Fair if enough. we had... Um, did I lose you? No, nope, you didn't. I think I got disconnected. Can you, hear, can you hear me now? Um, but what if we had thought out the Internet before it came All and right. put in protocols that it would be impossible for people to, to scam us? Yeah, well, we don't know. Um, can you still hear me, Steve? I, we, we might have been I having problems. I think my earplug came. Okay, we're going to try to fix that there. Uh, we're, we're talking with Steve Wozniak now about uh, what this whole technology means. Hopefully, uh, they'll get that fixed for him. Uh, but one of the things that has come up here is just how far we should police this. And if not everyone is on the same page about taking a temporary reprieve or stepping back, is that risky? In other words, do we all need to just slow down on this if, let's say, another country doesn't slow down or another company doesn't slow down? Uh, does, d does, that, does that risk having problems? Steve, um, I, I did want to ask you about that. I apologize for the audio issues. Do you worry, <laughs> if we don't all pause together, that that could be a problem? Oh, no, because that's sort of a fear mechanism, and I avoid fears. I, you know, driving your emotions up, what will get you into cults and, and religions and, you know, and yeah. politics. I just I avoid that. So, no, that's not right. Um, uh, somebody's going to get ahead of you. Competition. No, we should all do our best working together and come up with you know Got the it. best ideas and solutions and share them. Got it. You know, Open I was I'm so intrigued way, by you, know. you and what you created at Apple with Steve Jobs, and I always was impressed with the fact that you were ne it was never about the money for you. You've bemoaned the fact that so many engineers who become rock stars today are in it for the money. You had told someone not too long ago, I do not invest. I don't do that stuff. I didn't want to be near money because it corrupt your values. Um, now, Steve Jobs had billions, just what he was worth when he sadly passed away. You know, you have maybe hundreds of millions, which isn't bad, but do you, do you regret that? Or is it that something you'd still, oh, no. you'd still stick to? I would never trade my life for anyone in the world, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, anything. No, no, no. I have slept peacefully my whole life, and it comes to when I was in late high school, early college, thinking out how I should be and knowing who I was and why. And it mostly dealt with values, morality, but most of, more than anything else, ethics. Always tell the truth. Always tell the truth, and you don't get into doing bad things. And um, so for me, I did want—I was, I was skilled at one thing. You know, I was really, uh, for about 10 years, magic pouring out of my head for uh, computer design. And uh, I'm glad I did what I did. And, I'm, and I got the respect. I have the respect of engineers. That's what I want, not the respect well, of businessmen. Well, you have that. Other people, you, other you, people you, can have that. No, they you, want you have that in droves, my friend. But I, 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 I got a kick out of not too long you had said of Elon Musk that he wants to be a cult leader like Steve Jobs. A lot of people will follow you no matter what you say. Were you zinging him there? Were you drawing a distinction between the two guys? 
uh, the, the two Inways were cult leaders. You've heard of, you know, um, Apple uh, fanboys and yeah. the Tesla fanboys. No, Elon Musk has done a lot of great things, like Steve Jobs. Oh, my gosh, a new book, uh, a publication out um, on, you know, his legacy. And it's just incredible to read ex good things that he says. Um, Elon Musk, uh, you know what? He sat down and said, let's build a car that I don't have to make any sacrifices, but it's electric and it's a new style. And I made it for myself, he, he said. He didn't make it for the rest of us. He had a large family. He had to make a large sedan, and that turned the world around on electric vehicles and really gets the credit. He All also right. thought out that you need a car and you need charging. If you don't want to make sacrifices over a gas car, you need the equivalent of gas stations. The first six Tesla superchargers were between Southern California, where Elon lives, and Northern California, <laughs> where the factory and is. And it worked. Areas he was very familiar right. with. Yeah. Steve Wozniak, a real pleasure chatting with you. Uh, thank you for what you contributed to society. A lot of great things we all take for granted, but I know how it all started. Steve Wozniak, that'll do it here. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.